Hello, this is Unit 6. Today we are going to learn about 6.7 determining the empirical versus molecular formula. So this picture shows you the uh, a molecular formula of a compound and notice how the empirical formula is exactly half of it. That tells you what the empirical formula is. It is the smallest whole number ratio of moles of each element in the compound. So basically I divided this by 2. And then you get C5H11O4. Since 11 can't be divided further, that is your empirical formula. The empirical formula is a multiple of the molecular formula. For example, if you multiply this by 2, then you get the molecular formula. So to find the empirical formula, you must divide the molecular formula by a factor. And to find the molecular the formula, you must multiply the empirical formula by a factor. We are going to use those connections today to do computations. So here is where we are. We are not doing any more um, stoichiometry problems, but you are doing um, problems con containing mathematical relationships from those. I'll write this down in your notebook. So let's compare the molecular formula with the empirical formula. The molecular formula shows the actual mole ratio of each element in the compound, whereas the empirical formula here shows the simplest whole number ratio of the moles um, in each element of the compound. Um, the molecular formula is a multiple of the empirical formula. The Molecular or formula mass is the molar mass. This is a multiple of the empirical formula mass. And the empirical formula mass is always equal to or lesser than the molecular formula mass. And here is an example. To convert mo molecular formula, you divide it by a factor to empirical formula. To convert empirical formula or its mass, to molecular formula, you multiply that by a factor. You're going to do some math now. So this one, write this table down. This is for you to understand what molecular and empirical formulas are like side by side. So what is the empirical formula for this? It's C2, CH2. You divide them by 2. And this one, it's also CH2. This one is also CH2, and this one is also CH2. It's not always the case, but in this situation, we have different molecular formulas all containing uh, this ratio of um, elements in the formula. How about these two? This one, the, it's 1 is to 1, and this one, you can't divide it any further, so the molecular formula and the molecule, empirical formula are the same. This one, you can divide it by 2, and then you get C3H6N1O3. And the other one, also you can't divide further. So these two guys, the empirical and molecular formulas, are 1 is to 1. And here's the multiple. If you multiply this by 2, you get this. If you multiply this by 3, you get this. This one is 4 and this one is 5. And this one is a 2. This one is a 1. This one is a 2 and this one is a 1. The same is true for their masses. If you find the mass of this, um, this guy and you multiply it by 5, you get the molecular mass of this compound. If you multiply it by 2, you get the molecular mass of C2H4. And for these guys, their molar mass and empirical formula mass are one and the same. Please write this down in your notebook. Now we're going to do problems. Example 1. Which of the following have the same empirical formula? Now, if you quickly look at it, none of them have the same empirical formula. But you will see this one, the carbons are in two places as the hydrogens. You have to put them all in one place. So you have five carbons and nine, nine plus three is 12 oxygens. Now you see it's these two are the correct answer. 
I suggest you write all the uh, questions also in your notebook so that when you review, you can look over the questions. The second two questions, uh, next two questions are more calculation heavy. So here's one question, finding the molecular formula when the molar mass and the empirical formula is given. The empirical formula of a chemical substance is C2H3O. The molar mass of the substance is 129.135 grams per mole. What is the molecular formula of the chemical substance? So how would you answer this? Now, based on what we learned, there are whatever the mass of this, multiples of this makes this one. So you are going to find the empirical formula mass and divide the molar mass by it. And then you will find the factor. You use that factor to multiply this guy. And then you get the molecular formula. So here's the empirical formula mass calculation. You have two carbons, carbon times two, hydrogen times three, and oxygen times one. You're going to use the random uh, closest masses here. This is going to be one hydrogen and carbon is 12 and oxygen is 16. When you add those up, you get 43. So the mass of the empirical formula is 43 grams. You're now going to see how many 43s go into this. And this is how you find the factor. And when you divide them, you get a 3. That means the molar mass is 3 times the empirical formula mass. So basically, you multiply this by 3 to get the molecular formula. And that is your answer. Let's look at another problem. This, here's our problem. Example 3, finding molecular formula when the percent mass of an element and the, uh, in the formula is given. So I've given you the percent masses. We found this, we did this in lesson 6.6, .6, last lesson. So you are made out of 41% carbon, 6.72% hydrogen and 53.28% oxygen. If its molar mass is 60.052 grams, what is the molecular formula? So again, it's just like the other problem, except you don't have the empirical formula. You are supposed to find it using this information. You're going to assume these percentages are grams, and you're going to divide each one of them by their molar masses to find the moles. Then you find the chemical formula for the the empirical formula. Then you do the next step similar to the previous problem. So step one, find the moles of elements in the formula and assume the percentages are grams. So I wrote C, H and O and these are their ratios. We're going to divide 41 by 12 to find the molar mass. You must remember the ma given mass divided by molar mass gives you moles. So you're going to find the number of moles. This one, um, you're going to divide it by 1. And this one, you're going to divide it by 16. And you get these numbers. Now, these are not whole numbers. So you're going to get the smallest whole number ratio by dividing all of these by the smallest number in the ratio. It's this one. That's basically how you simplify ratios. So everybody gets divided by 3.33 and then you roughly get uh, 1 here, a 2 here and a 1 here. So the mole ratio is, this is your empirical formula, it's 1, 2, 1. Now you're going to find the empirical formula mass of this. So it's C1 times H2 times O1 which is 12 plus 2 plus 16 and the mass of the empirical formula is 30. Now you are going to divide the molar mass by the empirical formula mass and you get a 2. That means the molar mass is twice the empirical formula mass. And that, that also tells you the molecular formula is double the empirical formula. So you multiply it by 2 and then you are done. And now we are going to look at the review. 
So today we learned that the empirical formula is the smallest whole number mole ratio of elements in the molecular formula. The molar mass is a multiple of the empirical formula. So we learned how to do three calculations. One is finding the empirical formula when I give you molecular formulas. Um, and then the next two require more math. How to find the molecular formula when the molar mass and the empirical formula is given and find the molecular formula when the molar mass and percent mass of an element in the formula is given. For both of these, you found the, the empirical formula mass. You divide the molar mass by that to find the mole ratio of elements. And then you figure out, uh, you figure out the factor and then you multiply the mole ratio of the elements by that factor to find the molecular formula. And that's it. Uh, please do the exit ticket. I will see you in video 6.8.